on the line is so intense. It's edge of your seat watching. It's incredibly fascinating. Was this something you auditioned for? How did Dylan and the script find its way to you? Um, well, it's a funny story. I was on my way down to, uh, I was going, I was going surfing with my brother. So I was, I was in the car. My agent called me and he said, hey, can you talk? He, he, he messaged me, can you talk? I was like, yeah. He said, hey, there's this film with Mel Gibson. It shoots in Paris in like a week. I uh, Can you get on Skype with the director in two hours? I was like, on Zoom. I was like, uh, yes. And I just put my foot to the to the floor, got down to the coast, um, got on uh, the Zoom with the with the director. And he offered me the part and I didn't even read the script. It just said Mel Gibson's in it. And I said, yes. What was the breakdown then that you did get for Dylan? And if there wasn't much to it, was there anything you sort of developed for him while you were working it out and sort of fleshing out the character you'd be playing? Yeah, you know, I think what was interesting for me was that he was, um, he's really a stuntman, you know? He's, um, you know, he's not who he says he is. So whether I should reveal that is probably, I don't know if I should reveal that, but, you know, he he's not necessarily everything he seems to be. You know, he... Um, He's, he's a multifaceted person, he's a complex character. And so I wanted to, I just wanted to play every moment in the scene, every moment in the script as truthfully as possible so the audience could follow along with him um, and they could kind of kind of see the world through his eyes and experience the, the stress and the worry through him. And obviously the little twists and turns I can't reveal, but yeah, I always want to play everything pretty truthfully. How did they describe Dylan's relationship with Elvis and sort of the history they have together? Yeah, I mean, obviously, I think similarly for me, Elvis is kind of uh, a talk show legend, and for me, Mel Gibson's a you know a cinematic legend. So it was a very easy um, you know connection for me, like just to be like, well, this guy is very impressed with my character, is very impressed with um, Elvis, and. I'm very impressed with Mel Gibson, so I'll just use that for for the scenes, and I'll just make that um, make that part of part of the character. There's so many twists and turns to the movie that I mentioned. Edge of your seat watching. What were your thoughts when you read the script and saw how it plays out? I did not see the twist coming, so I can't imagine that the audience will either. Um, I didn't see any of them actually, so. I mean, I'm sure people would be able to figure out a lot more than I than I was able to figure out. But to me, it reads a bit like a puzzle, and it's a bit like um, it's it's very very it's very well layered. You know, we shot the film in a very short amount of time. Um, we shot in Paris instead of Los Angeles, and we you know we had a French crew, French director, and everybody was very clear about the beats, very clear about where the twists come, where the turns come, and. And, and the director sort of set up a kind of like, a, I, I can imagine it to be like a treasure hunt almost, you know, it's like breadcrumbs that he's left everywhere. You know, so he's put them in sort of like red red herrings in there as well. So yeah, it was fun, you know, I haven't made a movie like that before, so it was cool. What kind of advice then, or maybe tips did director Ramal Boulanger share with you about sort of maybe keeping it a little low key so you don't give away, <laughs> you don't tip your hand to who Dylan uh, may truly be, or uh, what advice did he give you about your portrayal? Or did he find that you seamlessly fit into this role so nicely that he enjoyed the choices you made? Yeah, he was pretty, um, he was pretty good with me. He didn't really have a lot of notes for me. He just let me kind of roll with it. And I, I think I brought more emotion to the character than he was expecting um more worry you know i was i was very aware that we're not shooting with um we're not shooting like you know it, with like a, a big knees on set you know we're not shooting with like a lot in, in in the picture a lot on the camera so it's very much just performance driven so i just um i did i did a lot of physical um, you know, like push-ups and sit-ups and jumping jacks before I would do each take to make sure that I had the 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 energy and the stakes so that it would feed well for the audience to watch. 
I'm telling you, it's an adrenaline rush throughout the whole thing because you're yeah. obviously concerned about Elvis and his family, but then there's so many layers to it. Was there a particular scene that you found a favorite or maybe one that challenged you the most of film? Yeah, obviously the, the scene that challenged me the most was the big scene with the gun, having to be emotional, having to point the gun, you know, um, it was very intense. And there were a lot of actors in that scene. So, uh, you know, the dialogue had to be on point and the emotion had to be on point. And so, you know, that one was kind of a big one to make work, but I am very happy with the result and I think it comes across well. Well, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you about working with the iconic actor Mel Gibson. What was your experience like on set? Um, it was amazing. You know, I I I guess I, I never thought I'd really work with Mel Gibson. He to me was sort of this um, you know, He's untouchable titan. iconic actor, right? He's an iconic <laughs> titan of the industry. And so I um I never thought I'd really get the chance to work with him and and, and working with him was actually they don't meet your heroes, but when I met him, he exceeded my expectations. So I was very grateful to him for his um, insight into the film industry, his um, ideas on set, um, and his advice, you know, the advice that he gave me throughout working together. Are you able to tease any of those? Are you keeping those sure. special for William sure. on those no, rainy days no, when you need? Absolutely <laughs> not, absolutely not. I mean, you know what? One of the things, um, you know, Mel would say to me would just be like, you know, it was really a lot to do with his 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 attitude and the way that he handled himself, the way he spoke, like it was all in a very practical way, in a very prag pragmatic way. You know, I think acting could be caught up in um, a lot of intellectualism and a lot of um, a lot of a lot of words whereas Mel is able to consolidate things down very practically you know like just remember him saying one thing about working on Apocalypto he used uh non-actors he, he used dancers and they'd never acted before you know and to me it actually is one of my favorite movies and he was saying that the way he got them to act was just by by learning to breathe the way the character would breathe and something as simple as that your breath is like uh, it gives you great insight into your character's headspace. So things like that were just, you know, great. My goodness. How did you shake off then a long day of filming with so much adrenaline pumping through you at that point? Um, that's a good question. Well, luckily we were filming in Paris in the height of summer and I was, um, they put us up in a really lovely hotel, like right by the Louvre. So I just would go off like a run in the evening and and I just run down the Seine and I'd run around the Eiffel Tower and, and it was just, you know, pinch pinch yourself kind of stuff. Um so that always like was a nice decompression for me. Running's always been something I've kind of used as an outlet for, you know, uh, how I'm feeling or whatever, you know. Well, this is as I've said, an edge of your seat watch. What do you think it is that's just gonna make on the line a fast fan favorite thriller that it's just going to make people really intense, <laughs> make it so that uh, this is a time-honored thriller that's just going to keep them guessing over and over again, no matter how many times they've seen the movie. I really think you don't see those twists coming. You don't see them coming, you know. I, I've got a feeling people will love the film because it it is, it'll be the kind of film where you're like, where you want to tell your friend to see it because you want to see if they got it. You know, it's a bit like, it's a bit like solving a puzzle. It's a bit like doing a jig, I guess in the old days we used to do jigsaws, but you know, it's a bit like solving a puzzle. It's like, you might want to be like, different. oh, did you see that movie? Did you, did you figure it out? Did you, did you get it, you know? And I think, I mean, the person who figures it out really is someone very smart because I, I didn't figure it out myself when I read it. So, you know, I think actually as a, as a like a little puzzle and, and as a thriller, it works really, really well. You've been a part of iconic projects yourself. I'm talking from Chronicles of Narnia to the Royals. Mm -hmm. What else? <laughs> what else are you busy working on these days? Actually, funnily enough, I am working on an iconic character right now. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm playing Davy Crockett. And so, yeah, so I'm here in Tennessee, in Nashville, and um, I have a day off today. So, um, so yeah, I'm playing Davy Crockett in a kind of survival style 
uh, I, I would say it's like historical fiction. You know, it's a it's a, it's a, it's a dramatized version of David Crockett's life. You know, he was a he was a, a bigger than life character. So it the story lends itself to some of David Crockett's legends and some of his um, activities. So yeah, I'm playing him and. I got a feeling the film's going to be something really, really beautiful and, and really exciting. So I can't wait for people to see it. Not to mention, you recently were Edgar Allan Poe for crying out. Say, I was <laughs> also Edgar Allan Poe recently. <laughs> <laughs> William, what does it mean yeah. to you then to be a part of these big projects, mm -hmm. playing such big, memorable mm -hmm. roles? Yeah. Well, I try not to think about it too much. You know, I um, there's a. Uh, I saw a t-shirt the other day and it had a picture of a guy um, playing tennis, you know, practicing on his, you know, hitting his serve. And in the background, it was like a picture of a trophy. And it was like, you know, if that tennis player looks at the trophy, he's going to miss the ball. But if he just focuses on the ball, he's good, you know? And I always think about that. It's like, just focus on your day ahead, focus on your lines, focus on, you know, your character. And just just don't worry about, about the rest of it. So I always just try to be, be like practical about it like that. What would you like to say then to everyone who are fans and supporters of the wonderful work you do on our screens? That's very kind. I would just um, like to say thank you. You know, I I would like to say thank you to those people that have seen my films and thank you to those people that have enjoyed them. And um, I hope I get to continue doing this job. I'm I'm proud. I'm honoured to do it. It's, it was my dream, and I'm getting to live that dream. So, without the audience, I don't, I don't have a career. So I'm, I'm very grateful to them, and I'm very grateful you know I mean I, I it sounds kind of great but I'm very, very grateful to God because I feel like I had um, some kind of spiritual connection to be able to do this and to just live it as I have and and I'm I, you know I I take it I take it seriously 